Joining us is Fordham football alum, John Constantino. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. And uh, in these difficult times, it's uh, good to see a friendly face. So during all of this, the uh, brand new Fordham football office project has commenced. Why did you feel you needed to get involved with this? Well, I think we've had a long history of trying to improve our facilities. Uh, I, I think we've done a decent job. The, the Hulahan family's done a fabulous job with, with the baseball field, which was near to my heart. And uh, we have changed the weight room configurations through Bill Walsh uh, and the Walsh training facility. And so we were always convinced that we needed to upgrade our facilities, both in terms of our, our, our schools that we're competing against, uh, but just in general, in terms of having a first-class facilities and a first-class institution like Fordham. You graduated from Fordham in 1967. What about your experience at Rose Hill inspired you to get involved in this way? Well, it, it's really interesting. I, I went out for the 64 team, and uh, my classmate was Joe Boyle, who uh, eventually made it into the Hall of Fame. A lot of other people did, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But... Uh, uh, Joe and I used to take the uh, train up to practice, and we were practicing you know, on Eddie's parade. And it, uh, what happened was, in the at the end of the second practice, I turned my ankle like in a cow hole or something, because that wasn't exactly the smoothest place. Uh, the guys in rugby used to chew it up pretty good, but uh, so I didn't get a chance to uh, play that season. And then I, I needed to uh, work after school because my dad had gotten ill. So I always loved Florida football, always wanted to play. And so I swore that I would try to stay involved. I went to every game, including going down to Georgetown uh, and everything else. Uh, wherever we traveled, I went and watched the team and continued to do that for a long time. Uh, I got very lucky. Uh, I became friendly with a rich Marin. Uh, Rich and I went to law school together. We went to college together, but we went to different schools, as I like to say. But uh, so uh, Rich and I spent a lot of time together. Uh, and uh, we became very close with some of the older alumni, uh, particularly uh, people like Roger Franz, uh, Herb Seidel, uh, Andy Lutak, uh, Andy Romeo. These were great guys and great football players. They were really outstanding. And uh, it was, they made us feel so welcome, even though we were not exactly the greatest football players. Uh, they made us feel so welcome that we felt we were part of the family. And because of that, the Gridiron Club sort of revived in many ways under Richie's leadership. And those guys helped us enormously. They, uh, you can never thank them enough. They, uh, they really uh, did everything they could to, to help us. So uh, that, that further ingrained my love for Fordham football, for the people involved. Uh, you know, we had great guys playing at the time. Like I said, Joe, uh, Joe Boyle and uh, Peter Signori, who were not only good football and great football players, but good guys. So we used to go out to Bill Walsh's uh, house at Lake Tahoe, California. And uh, Bill used to use the old Irish expression, we'll talk a little treason. And uh, what we would talk about is how we could help Fordham football, Fordham baseball. Dan Gallagher was the coach at the time of baseball, just a terrific guy and a fabulous coach. I mean, he's in the college baseball whole thing. And so Bill was interested in how he could help. And, uh, and that's how he really got re-engaged in Fordham. And so uh, then, he, then Father O'Hare asked me to have Bill join the Board of Trustees, and Bill always kidded around, and that was his first $10 million lunch that he ever had. So, uh, so that was a typical situation. Bill had been cut by the football team, and... Uh, he had been cut by Vince Lombardi. And Vince Lombardi had told him that, son, you do a lot of things well with football is not one of them. And so Bill never forgot that. 
he thought it was a very nice way to say goodbye. And he remained interested in Fordham football, but he was out on the West Coast. So he, again, was a, an important impetus in getting things done with his contributions uh, to the program and everything else. He also contributed to the baseball program. So he was a big help. We, we wound up helping Dan pay for the spring training one year when budgets were tight and went down and took batting practice with the guys in Florida. It was a lot of fun. But in, in football, and in, in, in the reason I was very happy to do the coach's office, uh, because I've always supported the team on an operating basis and so forth, and Rich and I contributed to the weight room and everything else. But, uh, you know, I really felt that the, the facilities were lacking. And I had been asked by Father O'Hare to go with uh, Larry Glick, who was the football coach at the time, who had played for the Chicago Bears, by the way, a terrific guy. And uh, Larry and I and a couple of other trustees went out to see the facilities at Lehigh and Lafayette and a couple of other places. And we, we were worried because, uh, you know, facilities have a tremendous impact on young people in terms of recruiting. So what we tried to do was to talk about the fact that we had to enhance our facilities in order to make us competitive. And then, you know, we joined the Patriot League, the return of arts and football, and then the joining the Patriot League, which is a major step forward for us. And I thought a very good step forward, and I thought it was in a good place. I think we all agree. You know, we, would we love to play Notre Dame? Sure. But you know what? I'm happy playing Holy Cross, too. So uh, even though we should beat them more often. But uh, anyway, uh, so uh, when this came up, we had had some really great coaches along the way. Uh, Dave Clawson, for example, who, you know, just a terrific coach and won us a Patriot League championship. But also, what I liked about our coaches, they cared about our, our players and they cared about our students and they treated our players as student athletes. So uh, I only felt these guys deserve a better place to sit. And uh, when the opportunity came up, uh, we uh, talked to Roger Malici and to Eddie Cole. And uh, John Zizzo and uh, the other John, uh, Romello, uh, who eventually joined the Board of Trustees. John Zizzo and I were on the Board of Trustees. I'm an emeritus, so uh, I, I served my time, as I like to say. And, uh, and the three of us got together and said, you know, it'd be a good idea if we could come up with an idea on how to deal with this. So we came up with the Three John Challenge. Uh, which I think has helped to motivate people to contribute. And, uh, you know, uh, Joe Moore had put us on the map in terms of we were now a program that people could be proud of, could be happy to cheer for and also to play for. And so uh, I think in Joe Conlon, we have the same thing. So we were all convinced that, you know, it would be great if we could get this facility up and running to help with recruiting, to help with the program in the sense of meetings and whatever else we needed to do. And that was the impetus behind uh, trying to get this done. And you couldn't have two better guys to work with than the two Johns, that's for sure. John, appreciate all your support. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes. My pleasure and uh, go Rams and uh, Let's get back out on that field soon, but not too soon that it's dangerous to guys. That's all. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate it.